Victoria, it's time for the galley get about. Oh my goodness, I thought you'd never call for me. Oh, it seems like it took forever. Okay, oh, my channel mammals, hi. I'm, I'm so glad you're back. I wanted to get on with this. Well, we're doing the second part right now of the Galley Gadabout. And I just wanted to remind you that if you'd like to give a thumbs up, if you like this program, we would love that. And be sure and comment. Anything you say will help me, I'm sure. And um, also, Tell your friends and everybody you know, even if they're not very friendly, they will love to see this. Maybe it will make them be friends. And also, don't forget Patreon. We are really ready for your support in um, having fun with Patreon. And it's going to get better and better as we go. More fun, especially for the beginning people. <laughs> oh, I'm glad I had my pillow down there. Oh, the idea of using your um, anything steel like your icebox as a, a way of you know people put magnets on their ice boxes for years right and all their children's art goes on there well um i use it for all kinds of things now and that is for instance this is a magnet it's a very strong magnet and then this little oil oil tin is steel so it sticks on there and this chain goes around it and sticks on there and this hook <laughs> hangs off and so now I have this way that I have a chocolate pot and, a, and a, a carrying tray hanging here out of the way but easy access and all because of it being a magnet that it comes off of and by the fact that the magnets up here instead of on the side it could never slide down so it's really secure and here's another example of using the um, using this is held up just by magnets see this right here and it actually is so strong of a magnet in here that it magnets right through the wood. It, it, mag, it uh, magnetizes right through the woods. And this this could go flying, right? It's just on the edge here, and it's um, it has some herbs in it. Um, but I put a magnet behind it instead of in it because it had all these herbs, and it never falls off. The same with this, see? But when I want it, I just pick it up. <laughs> this toaster we were throwing out because we had tried to fix it so many times and it never got fixed. And it did and then it wouldn't and it uh, just kept on being a problem. So we were ready to throw it out, but um, I thought, wait a minute, I love the shape so much and the, the workmanship of it. And there's there are a lot of things about the way it's constructed too that show that it's meant to be repaired and probably someone still could repair it. But, um, so I'm glad we still have it. We saved it. And we thought, well, we could put messages in here. And when you, when you have it plugged in, it, it goes tick, 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 and it open, and the message it comes up. And we used to, we haven't done it lately, but we used to put, um, a, like, um, a container at the table and it would have messages and people would pick out each one would take a message and it would be a topic that they could they were supposed to talk about which especially with people who don't know each other it's a fun way to get to know each other and then they would have their own twist on that topic and it could become a topic of discussion and so we could have topics of discussion in here or we could have cookies for dessert and they would pop up <laughs> oh here's another idea this is just a tool chest that was from out on the cargo deck it was on yankee and it's really strong steel and I thought oh that's a great place to keep tin you know biscuits and um, bread and um, other things that um, vermin might be attracted to and so we use that and we also have this little uh, picnic basket that's you know I mean we who who runs around with picnic baskets now we don't we're <laughs> we're living on an eternal picnic <laughs> And so we use this also for keeping things in. Mm -hmm. Right now, there are soda crackers and I forget what else is in there. Let's say you have a tray. How, how do you put it so you don't have to have it just stacked up somewhere? So I put these L brackets on the bottom and this little uh, thing that can turn. This, this should be polished, I'm sorry. And this is, in, this is I think, for a laundry or something. Maybe hang it on your laundry line to hang socks or something. But we use it in the galley because we wash our plastic bags. And then this, 
This is a shower cap from um, a hotel. You know, they always have shower caps in hotels. And so I use it to cover pies. And I had just made a shepherd's pie yesterday to put in the ice box to save for dinner. And so I, I, and after we, actually after we ate some of it, I covered it with this. It's using shower caps for covering your pies is a great idea. It's really useful. Oh, I know. This is, uh, this is something that you, you might not normally think of. <laughs> this is an armadillo. <laughs> and um, in Argentina, people eat armadillos. There may be other places um, in the south of the border. And, and, and uh, after they eat the armadillo, they make it into a basket. Isn't that great? I used to have a sewing basket of a big armadillo and its handle was its tail also. So I didn't eat this armadillo. We, we put this chandelier here. Someone gave this to us, a dear friend, um, when they passed away. And the Yankee doesn't have very high ceilings, so I always had to make sure it was over something. It couldn't be in the center of a room. So um, I just hung it here in front of the window and somebody saw it, one of our channel animals saw it. And they loved the idea of having chandeliers in places that they wouldn't have thought of, like in a galley. So they bought an old house and they said that they went crazy with hanging chandeliers everywhere. <laughs> Maybe even when you open up a closet, there's a chandelier, I don't know. <laughs> but isn't it fun how, again, we borrow from each other um, inspiration and use it in new ways. This is only here because we had nowhere else to put it but that person actually started to think of it as an idea that they wanted to cherish. Here's something fun to show you. This is a what my wire-haired dachshund. We used to have wire-haired dachshunds, and I thought, well, this is definitely made of wire, <laughs> so it's almost as good. <laughs> but I think it's a letter holder or something. I have no idea, I have no idea when, we, when this came into our lives. But <clears throat> what I use it for in the galley is for little toasts or crackers um, or biscuits of some sort. And it's just a funny way. And anyway, <laughs> it, it, it's fun. <laughs> All this stuff that just makes for play. Here's a little cup. I love this little shell cup. Isn't it beautiful? It's, look at that porcelain. It's Irish porcelain. And it's amazing, isn't it? Anyway, here's what happened. Um, one day, the little foot, you see there's a little shell. This isn't a real shell, it's a porcelain shell that was glazed and molded onto the little teacup. And this is supposed to look like coral. But the other little shell that was here broke off. So I I don't know, I, I found this little bead it, she, she was an angel or something, and it's just her neck broke. <laughs> and I still had this little bead. See her little cheeks and her eyes and her golden locks around the top of her hair? This is, a, remember when a baby powder used to come in little babies <laughs> like this? See, she has baby, or he has baby powder holes on his head. And this little uh, sieve, I don't know, it's just become his hat over the years. But now we keep um, cinnamon sugar in it for toast, for cinnamon toast. These are actually normally used, uh, they're just bent, you know, just on an andiron right in the workshop of a ship to, um, to hold a pipe up um, onto the ceiling or onto a wall that goes through the, the, um, the ship to keep it from falling or moving in all the transporting and move, movement of the ship. So here's a pair. <laughs> and the funny thing is that none of them are quite professionally done. They just cut some strip, whatever leftover scrap they have. And I just had different shapes and sizes of bolts. Here's a square bolt. And then these two are the same, but this one's different. And, <laughs> and I just put it together kind of the way they would have done it. And um, it was just natural to, to, to do what, use what we have right here. And here's another pair. You can see one um, screw is on over this side and the other screw is over on this side and they aren't the same. This one's way up high on it. And so it's all just um, the way it happens for, for the work to get done, you know, and not to be precious. It's not, it's not lifestyle. It's not 
uh, decoration. It's just work. And I love that. I love the fact that the, 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 the need is the beauty of it somehow. Okay, here's another. Um, this, these were on the cargo doors. Um, the big, huge doors that open onto the cargo deck to let cars in, to let people and luggage, to let big blocks of ice in. And so when they take off on, on the voyage, they have to close these big cargo doors. I mean, they're massive. And um, then they put a board behind these two uh, angled pieces of steel so that when the ship is at, at sail, it can move somewhat. <laughs> Maybe the, the block of wood was probably even bigger than my arm. And, but it can't actually ever open. So that's why they have this, this shape, why these were here in the shipyard. And then these were industrially made ones, so they're perfect. Those are also pipe holders, <laughs> but they're made especially for the job. So everything about them is true and uh, straight. Here's another one where they have one screw over here and one over here. It's just whatever was quick and easy, and but now look how they work for us right here in Galley in uh, Yankee. And then here's here's a whole row of um, of, of those uh, turned up the other way. Those industrially made pipe. I don't know if you can see this. <laughs> this is actually um, a knob for turning a water main off. You see. And then here is another kind of handle that we found just for the rubbish bin. And then here's a beautiful old handle that we found. And then here are a couple. Oh, these are, this, is, this is my favorite one. <laughs> See how every drawer has a different handle. And this one I just love. See, it's a belt buckle. This is something that Felix, our grandson, did. I just kept on handing him rope. <laughs> and you can see your different colors of rope all along. Do you know what this is called? This section? You can see it up here too. It's called the Turk's Turban. Way up here at the top and at the bottom. See that? It kind of looks like a turban, the way it's woven and twisted together, but it's done with rope. And so he put all this together. This has gotten a little undone over the years because um, Zeno uses it to sharpen his claws on. It's a perfect scratching post for a cat, don't you think? But it, the rope changes color. He, here's a little tiny piece of rope <laughs> that was a different color. And then another and another and another <laughs> and another and another. This we ha we're going to um, weave in to the, into it. We, we just filled this in because we've had this for years. But the rope sort of settled down. So we had a, a little section we could put in here to um, fill it in again. But what's so great about this is you don't have to... Well, not everybody has a pole they have to cover with rope. But it's great to do this if you have a hot pole, maybe um, a piece of a heat pipe coming down through a room or something, and you don't want to touch it because it's hot. But if you wrap it in a rope, well, it keeps it insulated. And it's nice to, if a piece of furniture or somebody touches it, it feels just warm but not hot. And also, just the idea of using what you have. You know, there's um, an old proverb um, in, in the Bible that says, what hast thou in thine house? And here's where it comes from is um, Elijah, the story of Elijah, um, way, way in the ancient history. Um, a lady came to him who was very destitute because when he came into a town, he saw her and she was picking up some sticks and he asked her what she was doing with the sticks. And she said, I'm, I'm going to go home and make a fire because all I have left in my house is a little small mite of meal and I'm going to make a little cake for my sons and me and then we are going to die. And he said, go home and make a, a little cake for you and your sons, but make a little cake for me first. And I used to wonder, gosh, it seems greedy for Elijah to ask for a little cake for himself first. But you know what his message was? It was to give her courage to have the confidence in abundance that was all never ever flowing, that she would never run out, that she would have so much gratitude that she could make a cake 
for him first to express gratitude for her new understanding that God is just ever flowing with abundance. We never run out of ideas and the light that makes us spark and go forward. So I just thought it's really important for us if we feel like we don't have what we need, that we remember that we always have inspiration and that all of our needs are met through um, this gratitude for, for the ever presence of that full abundance. And then there's another similar story with Elisha late, a little later on, who was a student of Elijah's, and he met a lady who also, you see in the Bible times, women, if their husbands passed away, they really were not able to work. It wasn't really the way their society was worked out. They had very specific roles for everybody in the family. And the women didn't have a place where they could go out and get a job. And so they, they would just be left by the wayside. And it was a terrible thing for them at that time and in their, their way of thinking about things. And so um, he, he said, what hast thou in thine house? And she said, oh, nothing. We have only a cruise of oil. And he said, T tell your sons to go out to all the neighbors all around and gather as many vessels as they can. Just keep on gathering vessels. And then tell them to bring the, all the jugs and vessels in and shut the door. And I used to think also, why shut the door? Well, what, what Elisha was really saying was a spiritual idea of shutting out any thoughts of fear, of lack, of criticism, of, um, oh, this is a foolish idea, like second thoughts. You know, just go to work. Close out any thoughts that would be impairing the progress that's before you. So she obeyed. She listened and she did what she was told to do. She shut the door with her sons and they helped her fill this cruise of oil into all these pots. But there weren't enough pots. It just kept filling and filling and filling and filling. And she said, we need more pots. And they said, there aren't any more pots and or cruises of, uh, or, um, you know, containers or vessels. And um, so it was just this huge abundance of oil. And do you know, she and her sons lived off the sale of that oil from that moment on. They had all they needed. So I guess that's kind of the, the idea with this little video. As you know, you may not have a, a pole that needs covering in your galley or uh, your, your kitchen. There may be many things that are, don't really fit with your particular situations. It's not really a design or decorating video. It's really a video to share um, the idea. Do you know what oil means in Greek? It means inspiration. The word oil translated in Greek is means is also a definition for the word inspiration. So that's, that's part of what that story expresses. But that's what we had today, just inspiration. And so I'm so excited to share together with you all. And we're all just going to go out and nothing's going to stop us. Certainly the belief of lack, which is the core of every problem, lack of love, lack of money, lack of ability, all this belief in lack, but it's the reverse of what's true. Ahoy!